Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, I'll be showing you how to connect to an SQL Server database from the Power BI desktop. So this is my SQL Server inside my Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio. So you need some information from here before you can connect to this database from the Power BI desktop. So you need to know the name of your server. In my case, my server is this one here. So I'm just going to right click and go Properties. So it tells you there the name. So this I'll need this information for the name of my server. Power BI Desktop needs that and also the password. So depending on the type of authentication you have, if you have a Windows-based authentication to connect to the SQL Server, then you use that from the Power BI Desktop. So we're going to connect to this database from Power BI Desktop and then we're going to access this AdventureWorks 2014 database. Once you launch the Power BI Desktop, you get the splash screen here which is a startup splash screen. So you can connect to data either by using this link here in the splash screen or inside the Power BI desktop interface, there is a get data option. So I'm going to just X out of this splash screen. I'm going to go here where it says get data. I'll click on that and then I'll click on more and that will bring up more data options. So these are the various sources you can get data from. I want to get data from a database. So I click database and I'm going to select SQL Server database. There are different databases you can connect to. So I'll select SQL Server Database and click on the Connect option to try and connect and talk to the database. So I get a prompt to enter some details. So I need to enter the name of my server. So that's my SQL Server name. And then I need to enter the database I want to connect to. So I want to connect to a database called AdventureWorks 2014, which is a database I have inside my SQL Server. So I've now got the name of my database. I'll click on this OK button and I wait for it to try and contact the database. So you can see here it's now connected to the database. This is the navigator window, basically telling me that it's been able to contact the database and has connected to the requested database. And it's telling me, showing me also all the tables and schemas inside that database server. So this is everything that it can connect to from my server. So what I want to do, I want to interact with one of the tables. So all these, we've got different schema. A schema is basically kind of like a department. So this is human resources, this is person. So I'm just going to scroll to look through the different types of schema. We've got the sales here. I'll scroll down to see if I can see any schema that I like that I want to interact with. Now I like, this is a schema called sales. I like the sales schema. So I want to see if there's something within that schema that I like. So I'm going to take a look at this table called sales territory, which belongs to the sales schema. So I'm going to check it and then I'll get a preview of the columns within that table. So I'm happy with that. I don't want to transform any of the data. I don't want to change anything. If I wanted to transform it or shape the data in any way, I just need to click on this edit button that will then open up the query editor, the power query editor, which will enable me to modify or shape the data. Anytime you shape data inside the Power Query Editor, it does not affect the original source. So I'm happy with the data the way it is. I'm just going to click Load, and that will load that data into my Power BI desktop. So we'll give it a few minutes to load the data. So the data has been loaded. That's the model here under the field section. So I'm just going to collapse that so we can see the different fields from that table. But what I can do, I can just drag whatever fields I like. I'm just going to drag this one here that says sales last year. So this is the sales for last year. Now, if I want to change the type of visualization, I can maybe try this chart, just play around with different visuals so that you can see how it looks. I'm going to add another field. This is sales for last year. I'm going to add this country region, just drop it in there. All right. So we now have sales last year and then it does it by country region. So if I just expand this a bit so you can see the data and I can change the type of visualization, I can come here and make it a bar chart if I want to. So looking at this chart, we can tell that US had the most sales followed by CA and then FA for France and then we've got Great Britain and so on. So you can change the type of visuals. So if I wanted something like this, I can change that or that. So depending on what visuals take your fancy. So we have been able to connect to a database inside the Microsoft SQL Server and interact with the data. You can publish your report to the Power BI service if you want to share it just by clicking on this publish button. But for now, I'm just going to leave it as it is. The purpose of this video was just to show you how to connect to a data source from a database. And the database server we connected to was Microsoft SQL Server. Thank you for watching. Bye for now. Hello there. What is PostgreSQL? PostgreSQL is a general purpose and object relational database management system. 
it is portable. That means it can run on multiple platforms like Windows, Mac OS X, Solarix, and Unix. It was basically designed to run on Unix-like platform, but it can also run on other platforms as well. That's why it is portable. PostgreSQL is free and open source. What that means is that the source code is available under the PostgreSQL license. So it's a liberal open source license. So you're free to use, to modify and distribute PostgreSQL in any form. PostgreSQL requires very minimum maintenance because of its stability. There are lots of companies that are using PostgreSQL. Let's take a look at some notable companies. So this is just a very brief list of some notable companies that are currently using PostgreSQL. So notable ones include Apple, we've got Skype, we've got Cisco and many others. Hello there. In this video, I'll be showing you how to install PostgreSQL on your local system. Postgres was developed for Unix like platforms. However, it has been designed to be portable. What that means is that it can run on multiple platforms such as Mac OS, Solaris and Windows. I will be illustrating by installing Postgres on a Windows based platform. Let's take a look at the steps that we are going to follow to complete the installation of PostgreSQL. So we are going to start off by downloading PostgreSQL installer for Windows. If you're installing on Windows, you do that via an installer. So once we've downloaded it, we'll then install PostgreSQL and we'll then verify the installation. If you are running Windows 8 or Windows 10, you will need to install PostgreSQL on an account that has administrative privileges. So let's begin by downloading the PostgreSQL installer for Windows. And the link is displayed on the screen. So if you head over to that link and then we can begin the download of the installer. So once you've navigated to the installer download page, there is a link that says download the installer certified by Enterprise DB for all supported PostgreSQL versions. So click on the link and select, there should be an option here for cookies. You can click OK to agree. And then you select your version, select the latest version that you can see. The latest version is usually displayed on top. As of the time of recording this video, the version is 10.5. So I'm going to click on that. And next you got to select your operating system. So I'm going to click on the drop down and select my operating system. I am running a Windows 64 bit. So I click on that and then you have the link to download. So just click on the download now and it will begin the download. So that's my download there. It has started. I just give it a few minutes to complete the download. So the download has finished. So I'm just going to double click on the link here to run the installation. You may get a user account control pop-up if you're running a Windows operating system. Just click yes to accept that and that will allow the installation to begin. So the installation is being processed at the moment. So we just let it um, go through the steps for processing and initializing the application. You'll be presented with a setup wizard. So click on next and you are presented with a default installation directory. You can accept that or you can specify your own installation directory. I would recommend you accept the suggested location that Postgres has specified. Just click next and then you have this select component option. So make sure you accept all the boxes that have been checked. What that means is that it will install all the options here checked. PostgreSQL server, the PG admin 4, stack builder, command line tool. Just accept all and click next and it tells you a data directory. It has specified a data directory for you. You can either change that or accept the default. I would accept the default. Click next. Next, you are given an option for a password. So you have to provide a password for the database super user for the Postgres database. So specify a password that you can remember. So this password here that you, you're setting up now is going to be the password for the database super user and service account. So once you've set that up, click on next and it's specified a port. Please select the port number the server should listen to. The server has to listen to a specific port. So you have to specify one by default, a port 5432 has been suggested for you. Please leave it as the default port and click next. And then you are asked for a 
database cluster if you want to set up a cluster. I would advise you use, you leave the default, which is default local, leave that as the default and just click next. And click next again and then click next again. And we just wait for the installation to run through. The installation may take a few minutes to complete. The installation has now completed. You can uncheck this box here for the stack builder. The stack builder basically can be used to download and install additional tools, which include drivers and applications that will complement your PostgreSQL installation. So I've unchecked that because some um, that is not necessary at this stage. When you're done, just click on the finish button. Let's verify the installation. There are several ways to verify the installation. For example, you can try to connect to the PostgreSQL database server from any client application, for example, PSQL or PG admin. However, the quickest way to verify the installation is through the PG admin application. So let me show you how to access that. To access the PG admin application, you do that from the programs menu and you click on the PostgreSQL folder. I'm just going to click to expand that. And within that, we've got this PG admin four, which is an administrative tool for administering PostgreSQL database and its various objects. So click on that to launch it. The PG4 is an admin tool for managing PostgreSQL. So let's on that this browser here. Let's click on the plus sign and on the servers, we've got PostgreSQL 10. So click on that and let's try. It's trying to connect to the server. It says you're currently running version 3.2 of PG admin. However, the current version is 3.3. Please keep click here for more information if you want to do that. So let's expand the server. We can you can click to update it if you wish, but I'm just going to exit out of that for now. And you can notice here it's giving you option to enter the password. So this would have been the password that you would have entered when you were trying to run during the installation process. So if you enter that password in there, it should let you connect to the server. You've got the option to save, but for for security reasons, I don't think that's a good practice. So once you've entered that, click OK. And it says you can see here on the bottom here, it says server connected, which means you have successfully connected and verified the installation. Once you have connected and if everything is fine, the PG admin will display all the objects that belongs to the server. So if I expand where it's got databases, you'll be able to see all the various objects that belongs to the server. You can see all these are objects and we're able to verify that because the installation has been a success. To see the properties of each of the objects here, you can just click on the object. For example, if I click on databases, you can see it shows that this is a Postgres database. The owner is this, and then you can click on other objects as well, login groups and so on. So that concludes the installation of PostgreSQL. So congratulations if you have successfully installed the PostgreSQL database server on your local system. If you had any problem during the installation, please feel free to let me know. I'll do my best to help. Thanks for watching and bye for now. Hello there. In this video, I will be showing you a couple of ways to connect to a PostgreSQL database. The first is via an interactive SQL shell, which is a terminal. It's called PSQL. And the second option is by a GUI. GUI basically is a graphical user interface using the PG admin tool. Let's try and connect to a PostgreSQL database using the PSQL tool. The PSQL is an interactive terminal program provided by PostgreSQL. So you can do a lot with it. For example, you can execute SQL statements, you can manage database objects and so on. So let's try and play around with the tool and connect to the database. The first thing we need to do is launch the PSQL program and you launch that from the PostgreSQL folder. So if you expand the folder and if you scroll down, you should see the SQL shell, which is PSQL. So if you click to launch the shell, so this is the shell. So the first thing you need to do basically is provide answers in different steps just by pressing tab or enter on your keyboard. So if you press enter, it will give you the name of the database. You press enter again, it will give you the port it is listening to. You press enter again, it will give you the username press enter and it will prompt you for a password. So you enter the password that you specified during the installation of PostgreSQL. Once you enter the password, if it's correct, it will give you this screen and you can see you've got the hash symbol next to the Postgres, which means it is waiting for some instructions. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to type in a very simple SQL statement 
to determine the version of PostgreSQL. So you just type in select and then you do a space, type in version. So make sure you wrap the version number in parentheses, opening and closing, and then you terminate it with a semicolon, press enter. It will give you the version. So you can see here, this simple statement is giving me the version of PostgreSQL. So you can see from here, this statement has returned one row. So we've successfully connected to the PostgreSQL database. To exit out of the program, all you need to do is hit Control and C, and you will get a prompt asking you to terminate. Just hit yes and press enter, and that will terminate the program. So let's take a look at a second method we can use to connect to a PostgreSQL database using the PG admin tool. This tool is a GUI application. That means it is a graphical user interface that you can see things in a graphical way. To access the PG admin tool, you need to open up the PostgreSQL folder by expanding it. And you should see the PG admin four tool. Just click to launch the tool. It's an administrative tool. So we'll give it a few minutes to fully launch. So this is what the PG admin tool looks like. When you launch it, you have to select an object in the tree view. This is a tree view. So you click on the plus to expand it. You can see a red cross there, which means you have not connected to the server. So if you just click on it, it will give you this pop-up box to enter your password to connect to the server. If you don't want to enter the password each time, you could click on save, but I wouldn't recommend that. It's not really a good practice, although it's okay if you're working in your own environment, but it's good to develop good practices um, right from the start. So I'm not going to save the password. I'm just going to enter the password I entered during the installation of the database. So I click OK. And you can see here it tells me the server is connected. So I can now access the database objects. You can see if I expand that, you can see all the various objects belonging to the database. We can quickly run a very basic query to test that we can communicate with the database. So in this view tree here, under databases, make sure you've got the Postgres database selected. And then on the tools, click on the query tool. The query tool is where you'll execute your query. So let's type in a simple query. So I do select, I do a space, I type in version and then wrap it round parentheses. And then I will add a semicolon. So this, if you just press this here, this little symbol that looks like a lightning bolt, and that will execute the query for you. All right, so it has now executed the query. So if you put your mouse over the output here, you can see the output that was returned, which is this text displayed there. So we've successfully been able to determine the version of the Postgres database from a very simple query. To exit the PG admin tool, you just click on the X and it will ask you a prompt. Are you sure you want to leave? Just say leave and that exits the application. You can also connect to a PostgreSQL database from other applications. So any applications that supports the ODBC driver or the JDBC driver can be used to connect to a Postgres database server. In addition, if you develop an application that uses an appropriate driver, the application can connect to the PostgreSQL database server using that driver. So let me quickly explain what ODBC and JDBC is. ODBC stands for Open database connectivity. It is an open standard application programming interface, which is API that is used for accessing a database. JDBC stands for Java database connectivity, uh, which is an application programming interface as well, API for programming language Java. There's a programming language called Java. So it defines how a client can access a database. So it's basically a Java based data access technology used for Java database connectivity. In this video, you have learned how to connect to Postgres database server by using different client tools, which included PSQL and PG admin tool. Okay. I also briefly introduce you to ODBC and JDBC. So these are APIs that can be used to connect to Postgres database from other applications. Thanks for watching and bye for now. Hello there. In this video, we are going to download and load a sample PostgreSQL database. I have already downloaded the database for simplicity and the database is basically in a zipped format. So I've got the database in a folder here. So I'm just going to click on it. So this is the database. It will be available for you to download under the resource area for this lecture. 
it's in a zipped format so you need to have a software extraction tool to extract the database so you can use winrar you can use winzip or any software extraction tool you have available you can use that to extract the database content so let me walk you through the steps we are going to take to download and load the sample postgresql database so we're going to start off by extracting the zipped database we're going to extract it to a dot tar format once we've done that we're going to create a folder on the C drive or any drive you wish, and then we'll place the extracted tar format into that folder. And we will create a new database using the PSQL tool. We need to create a database to restore the sample database into. Once we've created a new database, we'll then have to load that sample database using a command line tool. If you're on Windows, you use a command prompt. If you're on a Mac, you can use the terminal. Once we've loaded that, we'll then verify the loaded sample database by running just a basic query to make sure everything works. So let's begin by extracting the database. So I'm just gonna click on this folder here and the software extraction tool I have is called WinRAR, which is actually free to use. So I'm just gonna right click and click on extract here and it will extract the content. You can see now it has extracted the content. You can see this is extracted content. If I right click and click on properties, you can see that it is now a .tar format. All right, so what I need to do is now go into my C drive let me right click and copy this and I'll quickly go to my C drive and on my C drive, I will create a folder called temp just by right clicking and going on folder and I'll call this folder temp and inside this temp folder, I'm just going to right click and paste the tar formatted file. So this is the extracted database in the tar format. I've placed it into a folder on my C drive called temp. Next thing we need to do is create a database using the PSQL tool. So within the PostgreSQL folder, just click to expand that and then click on the SQL shell, which is a PSQL. And what we need to do is create a new database. So just press enter to just provide some answers until you get the prompt to log in. All right, so we've got the username. And now you need to enter your password. So enter the password you entered during the installation of the database. Once you've entered the password, you need to create a new database and the way you do that you type in the command create you do a space followed by the word database okay you do a space followed by the name of the database and the database is going to call dvd rental okay dvd rental that is the name of the database and then you end that with a semicolon you press enter you may get a prompt to enter the password if you do get the prompt, just enter the password. If you don't get the prompt, you it will return back to the command line, which means it has created the database. So once you get that create database, that means the database has now been created. The next thing we need to do is load the sample database from the temporary file that we extracted it to. So to do that, we need to open our command line tool if you're using Windows, or you can use the terminal if you are on a Mac. That's my command prompt. I'm just going to right click and click run as administrator and that will open up a terminal window. So this is my command prompt here. So the first thing I want to do is just navigate to the C drive. So I do that by typing CD dot dot and that will navigate backwards. I do CD again dot dot and press enter and that will give me the C drive. So I've now navigated to the C drive. The next thing I want to do is locate where my Postgres SQL was installed and add that to the path. So what I need to do is open up my folder and go to my programs menu and locate usually in program files. So that's my PostgreSQL folder here. So I'm just going to click on that and then click inside that and then click in the bin. So this is what we want. So what you do, highlight the, this path here for the bin directly, just copy that. And then we go back into our command prompt, just type in CD and then you paste the path into it and press enter. You can see now we are now referencing the bin directory from the Postgres installation. So I'm just going to type in CLS to clear the screen so that I only have the path I want. The next thing I want to do is to use the PG restore tool to load data into the DVD rental database. So this is the tool here. I pasted in this here. So you have PG underscore restore. You do the dash underscore capital U that basically specifies Postgres user to log in to the PostgreSQL database. That's what that is. And then we have the DVD rental. Okay, and that is a path 
to the extracted sample database. So we just press enter and that will ask you for a password to the database. So we just enter the password to the server and press enter. You may get some errors. So if your console or your terminal is clear and it returns to this command here, that means it would have loaded the database. So if we launch the PG admin GUI tool, we can use that to check the database that was loaded. So open up the GUI tool by locating it inside your PostgreSQL folder. So that's my PostgreSQL folder. And I'm just going to click on PG admin four. And that's my PG admin four tool here. So this is the tool here. So it tells you here on the databases, it's giving me four here. So if I expand that, I've already expanded it. You can see the DVD rental database. So if I expand that, you can see all the objects belonging to that database. If I come here and on the schemas, we've got the public schema and these are all the objects of the schema. If I click here, you can see the tables. These are all the tables. There are 15 tables in this sample database. So if I want, I can do a quick test by going on the tools here and opening the query window. It's saying no object selected. I need to select an object. So I select this schema and come here and do query and it will reference that schema. You can see here it's got DVD rental. That means it's referencing that database. So I should be able to execute a query against any of the database tables. So I'm just going to pick this table called actor. So I will type in select and star from the table called actor. I'm using the asterisk because I want it to select to return all the records from that table and then press this symbol here. And you can see the output here tell me successfully it has returned 200 rows from this table. So this is a verification that we have successfully loaded the sample database. In this video, we downloaded and loaded a sample PostgreSQL database. We started off by extracting the zipped database into a .tar format. We created a temp folder on the C drive and placed the extracted tar format into that database. We then created a new database in PostgreSQL using PSQL. You have to create a database in order to load the sample database into. So we did that. We then loaded the sample database using the command line tool. And we were able to verify the loaded sample database by running a very basic query on one of the tables in the database. Thanks for watching. If you had any problems during the loading of the database, please feel free to contact me. I'll be more than happy to help. Thanks for watching and bye for now.